All right, let's take a look at mixed operations with rational expressions. And we'll do that by just remembering how to do a rational number question. And we'll see some of the similarities and differences. So if we have 1 half plus 1 quarter divided by 2 thirds, the key to doing this question is to remember the order of the operations is important. And there was an acronym BEDMAS, or some people use PEDMAS, to be able to remember what to do first. And so in this case, there's nothing inside brackets, so I move on to exponents, which there's none, and I do division and multiplication. So this question becomes 1 quarter, and then instead of divided by, it multiplies by the reciprocal, and so I get 1 half plus 3 eighths, and now I have to use my adding and subtracting fractions skills to get uh, equivalent denominators and now I know that the answer is eighths and there are seven eighths and we have to do the exact same thing with our rational expressions that now contain algebra so um, if I have x plus 5 over x minus 6 plus 1 over x minus 4 divided by, and notice I've sort of set these questions up to be essentially looking the same. I've got a fraction plus a fraction divided by a fraction. Then I have to do the same sort of steps. I need to first go and deal with the division, get an answer, then do the adding and subtracting. So let me show you how that works. Uh, I'll do the work in black here, but this part never changes. You need quite a bit of room for this, so um, you may need to work in a separate workbook, or uh, I know my class is like whiteboarding. Grab a whiteboard and work on there. So <clears throat> we're going to take this division and make it into multiplication, but that's going to flip over this fraction, do the reciprocal, uh, and at the same time it would be a good idea to do um, the factoring. So that x minus 6 is going to go on the bottom instead of the top. There's going to be a multiplication step here. And then this factors to x plus 5 and x minus 4. And that'll allow us to cancel out some things and give me x plus 5 over x minus 6 and another x plus 5 over x minus 6. And so I'm going to have my common denominator. Luckily it's basically set for us, so my numerators will add together and I'll get 2x plus 10. Okay, let's take a look at some other examples. So here's an example of just adding rational expressions, and now I'm going to make it quite a bit more complicated by adding in another series of terms on the denominator. So this is your numerator and your denominator. Now there are a couple different ways to approach problems like this. Uh, in the first method you can simply add the numerators together and add the denominators together by making common denominators. So on the numerator, I've got a denominator of x minus 1 and x minus 2, so a common denominator is x minus 1 times x minus 2, and I would go and add those two fractions together. And on the denominator, I've got subtraction of fractions, so I need a common denominator of x plus 2, x minus 1, and then I could go and combine those together. So this is the method I'm going to use first. So this term here is going to multiply by x minus 2 on the top and x minus 2 on the bottom. And this term here is going to multiply by x minus 1 on the numerator and denominator. And on the bottom, this one here is going to multiply by x minus 1. And so is this. And over here, this term is going to multiply by x plus 2 and so is this. And so what I end up getting is 4x minus 2's and 3x minus 1's. So that's this part on the top over that common denominator of x minus 1 times x minus 2. And that all gets divided by, so that's my numerator, that all gets divided by 2x minus 1 minus 3x plus 2's all divided by 
x plus 2 times x minus 1, which is my common denominator on the denominator. So I can think about this instead as, and I'm going to do distributive law on the top just to simplify it out because there's adding and subtracting. So I get 4x minus 8 plus 3x minus 3. That's all divided by x minus 1 times x minus 2. And that's getting divided by this denominator, this red part down here. So this line means divided by. And so I'm just stating that as that divided by sign over there. So taking that red bracket denominator, uh, I will get 2x minus 2 minus 3x minus 6. Watch out for that one. You need to make sure you distribute this minus 3 properly to both terms. And on the denominator, x plus 2 times x minus 1. I give myself a little bit more space. So once I've added the numerators using the common denominator and subtracted uh, the denominator using the common denominator, um, then I have now turned this into uh, a multiplication slash division question. It's division, but I'm eventually going to make it a multiplication question. And I did that after I did a little bit of simplification. So let's continue with the simplification on the top left. I get 7x minus 11 and just leave this factored. And now I'm going to flip this over and simplify it at the same time. So the x minus 1, x plus 2 that's on the denominator is now on the numerator. And I get negative x minus 8. And so now I can start to look and see if there's any common factors. And there's 1 right there. This piece doesn't factor. This piece could factor, but it's just negative and x plus 8. So... I now get an answer that's got 7x minus 11 times x plus 2, and on the denominator I've got this negative sign, and I've got x minus 2 and x plus 8. And none of those are common factors, so that's the end of this question. It's finished. Let's take a look at another way to do this exact same question. Um, that leads to the exact same answer, but it's uh, got a couple different steps, especially near the beginning. So in this method, instead of just looking at the top two um, and coming up with a combinator just for the top two, and then looking at the bottom two and coming up with a common denominator for the bottom two, in this case, I want to look at both. And if you do that, the lowest common denominator for all of these is, well, I've got an x minus 1, and an x minus 2, and an x plus 2. Oh, and the x minus 1 is already listed. So in this case, I have three little um, factors on the bottom that are different. So the lowest common denominator is x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 2. So my next step, so that's the first step, my next step is take your fraction, remember each of these are little factors, and this is the numerator and this is the denominator, and now what I do is I multiply the top by x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 2. So the second step is to multiply by this uh, lowest common denominator of all of the uh, factors of the denominators. So I multiply the numerator by that, and I multiply the denominator by that. And this looks like it's going to be really complicated to do all this multiplication of this huge thing together, but it, it's actually not that complicated to do. So by the distributive law, all of this multiplies that first term, and all of this multiplies the second term. And let's take a look and see what that does. So I'm really getting 4 and x minus... I'm going to write it all out, but... Um, it's actually, you can, you can kind of skip one step. So that, that's what's happening to the first term. And notice that there's something that's going to cancel out. And then the second term, when I multiply by everything, will also have one thing cancel out. So I don't actually have to write all of this. I'm going to save myself some time. Since there's something that is going to cancel out in every single case, let's just cancel it out. So when I multiply this uh, big LCD by this first term, the x minus 1's cancel, and I get 4, 
times x minus 2 times x plus 2 plus 3 and then when I multiply this by this term I get the x minus 2's cancelling out so I'll get x minus 1 and x plus 2 left over and the x minus 1 denominator and the x minus 2 denominator are totally gone so that is my new numerator and then when I distribute this piece to the first part, the x plus 2's cancel, and so I get 2, the x plus 2's cancelled, x minus 1, x minus 2, and then minus 3, minus 3, and the x minus 1's cancel when you multiply and divide by the same number, they're cancelled, and so this multiplies by x minus 2, x plus 2. Now I have some distributive law and some algebra to do, so I've got 4, um, this becomes x squared, plus 2x minus 2x minus 4 and then I get 3x squared plus 2x minus 1x is just plus 1x minus 2 all divided by 2x squared minus 2x minus another x is minus 3x plus 2 minus 3 and that becomes x squared plus 2x minus 2x cancel minus 4 and so now I'm getting into just doing some distrib distribution and uh, collecting like terms and things like that. So this becomes 4x squared minus 16 plus 3x squared plus 3x minus 6 all divided by 2x squared minus 6x plus 4 minus 3x squared plus 12. Again, negative times negative. And that becomes 7x squared plus 3x minus 22, and on the denominator, negative x squared minus 6x plus 16. And from the last unit, I'll leave it to you to factor the numerator and factor the denominator, after you take out a negative sign, of course, and you should end up with 7x minus 11 and x plus 2, and x minus 2 and x plus 8 which is exactly the same as what I found from the other method. So you can choose which of these methods you want to use. Um, either work. Uh, I like the second way. It's, uh, it's generally a little bit faster but you do have to know how to factor some a little bit more complicated things and in the other method I don't think we saw as much factoring uh, when we did this method here at all because we were dealing with much smaller numbers and things that were already cancelled. So I'll let you choose and uh, we'll see you in class.